Hello, classic film fans. I am Mary Lyle, Director of Education for the Western Heritage Museum and Lee County Cowboy Hall of Fame. And I'm here to introduce the 1957 film, Gunfight at the OK Corral. It is directed by John Sturgis. And as you remember, he's the one that directed The Magnificent Seven. And he is very good at directing action sequences, all those gunfights, and uh, he doesn't let anybody down in this one as well. The writers of this film are Leon Uris of Exodus fame and also George Scullin. It is based on the most famous gunfight in the West, but they have taken a lot of dramatic license in the retelling of that story. Okay, the music is by the great Dmitry Tiomkin. The title song is sung by Frankie Lane. His voice is very recognizable from the TV show Rawhide. When Mel Brooks was filming Blazing Saddles, he wanted that type of a song, that rawhide sound, and so he put an ad out that asked for a Frankie Lane type of voice. He expected a Frankie Lane imitator, and instead, the person that showed up for the audition was none other than Frankie Lane himself. So he recorded the song, and it was nominated for an Academy Award. So Frankie Lane got to sing on the Academy Awards. This film was nominated for two Academy Awards for film editing and best sound recording. It received 83% on Rotten Tomatoes, and in the new edition of Cowboys and Indians magazine, they rated their top 100 westerns, and it's rated number 46. The cast is headed by Burt Lancaster as Wyatt Earp and Kirk Douglas as Doc Holliday. This is the film that really cemented their friendship. They made seven films together. Now, it was filmed on location in Old Tucson, which is really a film studio, film ranch. That's where they used to make a lot of films and also TV shows like The High Chaparral. It was also filmed in California and on location in Texas. Some other people in the cast, DeForest Kelly, he plays Morgan Earp. It's interesting because he has played three of the participants of this gunfight at OK Corral in different movies. In this film, he plays Morgan Earp. In 1953, in a TV show, he played Ike Clanton. And then in Star Trek, the crew landed on a planet that had gotten a hold of some Old West. I don't know what it was, but he got to play Tom McClurry. You also have John Ireland, and I mentioned him in this context because he played previously Billy Clanton in My Darling Clementine and in Gunfight at the OK Corral, he appears as Johnny Ringo. Here's some other recognizable actors. Martin Milner plays James Earp, Earl Holloman as Charles Bassett, Dennis Hopper plays Billy Clanton, and Lee Van Clee plays Ed Bailey. As far as the women's roles go, we have a great stage actress and film actress, Jo Van Fleet. She plays Kate Fisher. Rhonda Fleming, who is beautiful, uh, she plays Laura Denbo. Here's a little bit of the historical background. The fight took place 140 years ago in October of 1881. It lasted only 30 seconds. That's not the case in this film. As I said before, John Sturgis was wonderful at staging these gunfights, and he, he does a dandy job in this one. But just remember, that's not the way it happened. The men involved exchanged 34 bullets. After the dust had settled, the three men lay dead. The group that was headed by the Clantons were called the Cowboys. And then the Herbs, they represented the townspeople, and so they were the lawmen. I Clanton brought charges against the Herbs and Doc Holliday. And so there was a hearing, and the charges against them were dismissed because as lawmen, they were doing their duty. They were trying to disarm the cowboys who had violated an ordinance that said that nobody was to carry a gun in Tombstone. 
A lot of people say that the Earps were as responsible for the gunfight as the Clantons, that they were both at fault. These were two warring factions. And in this film, Wyatt Earp and his brothers are doing the right thing at all times. Well, that is a long way from the truth. The Earps came west because they were seeking their fortunes. They had started out in Dodge City and were lawmen there. Virgil was the first one to go to Tombstone. He was the one that was the U.S. Marshal, not Wyatt. So he had the real authority. Then the brothers came and joined him in Tombstone. Now Tombstone started out as a silver mining town, and so everybody that wanted to get rich quick went there. It grew very fast. There were bars on every corner, a lot of gambling going on, prostitution, gunfighting. The cowboys were actually rustlers. And that part of the story that they're telling in here is true. The Earps were also accused of robbing some stagecoaches themselves. So they were not that upstanding. They had an interest in one of the gambling halls. And Doc Holliday was acquainted with the Earps back in Dodge City. And then they all traveled west together. In fact, some things that the film got wrong, Johnny Ringo was not there. The fight only lasted 30 seconds. It did not take place in the OK Corral. It really took place in an empty lot that was near the OK Corral. And it was really closer to a place called Fly Photographic Shop and Fly Boarding House. That is where Doc Holliday was staying. So a lot of people think that maybe the Clanton gang were lying in wait for Doc Holliday. He was a good gambler and he was very fast with a gun. His legend is that he killed many men, but historians have narrowed it down to about three or four that they can really attribute to Doc Holliday. During the fight, everybody that participated he was wounded or killed, except for I Clanton, and he was able to escape. The only one standing was Wyatt Earp. And it is said that he was very cool under fire. He kept his head and he kept his mind focused on what he had to do. Something else the movie got wrong was the killing of the Earp brother. In this film, it's James who gets killed, but in reality, it was Morgan. And that killing didn't take place until after this fight. It was an ambush. He was shot in the back. Wyatt Earp survived. When he moved to California... Uh, he did various things. He tried to find a gold mine. He lived in San Francisco. And then he went down to Southern California. And that's when the silent film started. They needed cowboys and people who had expertise in shooting and all that. And so they enlisted the aid of some of the gunslingers like Wyatt Earp. He became very good friends with two famous actors, William S. Hart and also Harry Carey Sr. So when you watch the film, just keep in mind that this sort of is a fictional retelling. The characters are based on reality. The real characters were not these people. Wyatt Earp he was much more complicated. He had good things about him and he had bad things too. I hope that you will enjoy watching Gunfight at the OK Corral. Let us know what you think. Contact us on Facebook or email us, and we'd be happy to hear from you. We'll see you next time.